From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Mr. Dollar. Well, this is Jet Bramler. Oh, hiya, Constable. Reckon I got the wrong number. I was calling Shady Lane Cafe. Now, you've got it. I'm sitting right here at the counter. Yes, well, but uh, where's Millie, Mr. Dollar? She's busy crying at the moment. I'm waiting for her to get through and hoping she'll confess to murder. Now, you hadn't ought to have gone and made her cry that way. Millie is a fine girl. That's the trouble with this whole case, according to you. Everybody in this township is fine people, all of them. Ellen Bates was a fine woman, too, and now she's dead. And one of these fine people killed her. No, I'm no. going to find out which one, Mr. Bramler, and I'm going to tag him for it. With your help or without it. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Shady Lane, Vermont, to the home office, Star Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Shady Lane matter. Expense account continues. <laughs> Item 7, $1.40, one pot roast special at the Shady Lane Cafe, while waitress Millie Wells dried her tears and repaired her face. I thought over what she'd said, what I'd taken for a confession, and tried to fit it in with the other facts in the case what few facts there were. A young farm wife, a semi-invalid named Ellen Bates, had been shot to death while sitting at the front window of her house. The weapon was an old-fashioned squirrel rifle, a type of gun owned by half the people in the township. Ellen Bates had no known enemies. Her husband, beneficiary of a $10,000 insurance policy on his wife's life, had been accused by a spiteful neighbor of carrying on with pretty waitress Millie Wells. It's a lie, Mr. Dollar. Anyone who says Ben and I were seeing each other or even thought of such a thing before his wife's death is a mean, vicious liar. All right, take it easy now, take it easy. There's no point in getting yourself all worked up and starting to cry again. Ben's a fine man, straight and decent. And it makes me boil to have some low, sneaking gossip try to smear his reputation without reason. It reflects on your reputation a little too, Millie. I don't care about me. I told you what I've been through. I'm used to it. Do you ever get used to something like that? No. No, not really. A murder charge isn't an easy thing to forget. You dream about it nights. Prison, the courtroom, the trial. The things they said about you. But you were acquitted, finally. I was acquitted. And I was innocent. But just being tried for murder brands a person for life. What were the details of the case? First, let me tell you about Ben. You haven't met him yet, Mr. Dollar. You, you don't know him. And I know the line you're thinking along. It's the way things point, Millie. Then things point wrong, that's all. Maybe. Go on. Well, he's been coming in here for the last six months. Not often, just... just every once in a while, just to eat. Does Ben know you stood trial on a murder charge? He does now. He didn't before, before his wife was killed. We just made conversation, that's all. And since her death? There's been no carrying on, as some people choose to think. One day, Ben said, Millie, when, when this mess is all settled, I'd like very much to see more of you. That's all. That's all. And that's enough. Because I love him. About the trial, Millie. It was four years ago, in Chicago. I was working for a family on the west side as a nursemaid, governess. They were wonderful. What happened? The wife died suddenly under strange circumstances. It could have been an accident, or it might have been poison. I thought you already knew about it. That's why I blurted it out that way. Oh, I'd have found out anyway, sooner or later. Yes, I know. It was in all the headlines. The same things that they'll be saying about me here. What do you mean? I was accused of murdering the wife because I was in love with the husband. I left the Shady Lane Cafe and the tortured girl whose secret, close hidden for four frightened years, was now the property of a stranger. It was late now, and the town square was dark and deserted. A stark white moon was climbing the eastern sky, and the soft summer night's breath stirred in the leafy tops of the maples, whispering other secrets, 
Secrets the villagers dared not stay abroad and listen to. A fantasy, sure, pure and simple. Uh, maybe it was a bad slice of pot roast. Anyway, the dim light burning in the office of Constable Jed Bramler brought me back to harsh reality. Come in, Mr. Dollar. Come in, pull up the chair. Okay, thanks. That uh, girl stopped crying yet? Sniffling a little, maybe, but she's practically stopped. For the time being, at least. Mean something by that? You know what I mean by it. Yeah, I reckon you must have found out about her past, so to speak. You knew about it? Yeah, since the day she came to town, stopped in to see me, told me all about it. Well, you were keeping it pretty quiet, weren't you? It was told in confidence, Mr. Dollar. All right, but this is a murder case. It don't have no bearing. Millie ain't involved. Would you mind if I had a chance to decide that once in a while? Didn't know you'd be interested. Don't you realize that Millie Wells may be the reason for the killing? Still beating a dead horse, eh? I think that horse is coming to life, Mr. Bramler. You do. The way things stand right now, a prosecuting attorney could go into court with a pretty strong case. The charge, first-degree murder. Accused, your friend Ben Bates. You ain't met Ben yet, Mr. Dollar. No, no, I haven't met him, but the facts add up. It's an old, old story. Yeah, it's a downright classic. An invalid wife, a pretty girl, a run-down farm that doesn't look as though it's made a profit in years. A $10,000 life insurance policy dangling like a carrot. Yeah, fact is, it's even worse a picture if you're mind to look at it that way. How? Oh. That farm of Ben's ain't only run down, it's mortgaged to the hilt. Oh. Ben needed money for Ellen's operations. She'd had three in the last year and a half. He tried every way he knew how to, but the banks wouldn't touch it. Well, in that case... Martin Preeny, his next-door neighbor, come through and helped him out. $7,500. Is the farm worth that much? Nope. Wouldn't bring $4,500 if it was sold tomorrow. That's what I mean. Ben feels pretty obligated. And the $10,000 from that policy on his wife would have taken the pressure off all the way around. Plus, leave him free to marry Millie Wells. All right, all right. I know it adds up that way. I've been studying over this thing for a month now trying to figure out some other way of explaining it, hoping that somebody would show their hand. Yes, make a move of some kind. And nothing's happened, huh? No. Whoever done it is just sitting tight, waiting. Might be a good thing that you come along. Might jar things loose a little. Yeah. Well, whether I'm right or wrong, one thing we've got to jar loose is that gun. That's a fact, all right. Can't make much of a case against nobody without that gun. You said nearly everybody in the township owned one of those old-fashioned squirrel rifles, the type Ellen was killed with. That's right. Well, what about her husband? Does Ben own one? Nope. Nothing but a shotgun. Yes, I saw it when we were out there this afternoon hanging over the mantel. But at the same time, I noticed something else. What do you mean? That shotgun was resting on a pair of hooks set into the bricks above the fireplace. But the hooks hadn't been put there for that particular gun. Now, they were too far apart. What are you getting at, Mr. Dollar? I think those hooks would fit a squirrel rifle just fine. Ben ain't one to lie. He told me he didn't have a rifle. But that's something else I've been studying about. What do you mean? I kind of half remember seeing a squirrel gun hanging over that mantle in years gone by. Expense account item eight, three dollars. Car expense for another trip out to the Bates farm. A late night trip this time, and the last one, I hoped. Constable Bramler had suggested that my being in the case might help stir things up. Good, I was all for it. And not just stir things up, but wind them up. Tonight, maybe, if we caught Ben Bates at home. Lights on inside. Yeah, you must be here someplace. Oh, evening, Jed. Ben, like you to meet Mr. Johnny Dollar. Mr. Dollar, Hi, ben. Well, you fellas are out late. Little, I reckon. Mind if we come inside, Ben? Oh, sure. Sorry, Judd, I didn't think. Well, let's go on back through to the kitchen. That's about the only room I use since... Well, anymore, I mean. Set yourselves down there at the table. I'll get us some lemonade if there's any ice left. Oh, a lemonade lift would suit me fine. Don't go no trouble for us, Ben. No, no trouble at all. Got it already made. Just have to chip a little ice into it. I reckon you'll kind of have to bear with me. I'm not much used to having callers come around since Ellen. It's all right, Ben. Here we are. Hey, you fellas got some business out this way tonight? Fact is, Ben, we come out here to talk to you. Mr. Dollar is an insurance investigator. He's here to find out who killed Ellen. I see. 
You got any ideas yet, Mr. Dollar? I've... I've kind of got an idea you might have done it, Ben. I wouldn't have harmed a hair of Ellen's head. I could be wrong. Mr. Dollar has been checking around, Ben, talking to people here and there. Preenies, Millie Wells. What's Millie got to do with it? Nothing, maybe. Or she might be part of the motive. I didn't even make her acquaintance, hardly, before the last week or two. What about Mrs. Preeny? You've known her longer, haven't you? Yes, she was a good friend of Ellen's. Why? She thinks you killed your wife. She wrote an anonymous letter about it to the insurance company. The woman's crazy. I knew she never liked me for some reason, but I sure wouldn't figure her to go that far. Ben, uh, whatever happened to that squirrel rifle you had around the house? Why, the week before Ellen died, somebody... Yes, Ben? No, I didn't lie to you, Jed, not actually. When I told you I didn't have a rifle like that, I didn't. Not then. And you didn't ask me if I had had one. What happened to the rifle? Well, it was stolen the week before Ellen was killed. I haven't seen it since. Mm -hmm. No, that's the truth, Mr. Dollar. You didn't report it being stolen? Ellen asked me not to. She figured she knew who took it and she wanted to give them a chance to make good. You know how she was. But after she'd been shot by that same kind of rifle, you still didn't report it. Report afterward that the gun had been took before? <laughs> Who might have taken it, Ben? Well, I've tried to think. It wasn't nobody came here that week except Mrs. Preeny and Grody Hawkins. Grody and... Hawkins. That's the hired hand we met here this afternoon, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, I know. The one who was a dead shot with a gun. Yeah, no, no. Grody wouldn't kill nobody. He's a little touched, maybe, but he's good-hearted and gentle. Is he another one of your pets, Constable? Don't you care whether the killer is identified? It's kind of a funny question to ask a murder victim's uncle. Uncle, Mr. Bramler, was Ellen Bates your niece? She was. I didn't think to mention it, Mr. Dollar. Just figured you knew, I guess. And anyhow, it don't have no bearing. Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a slow net tightens and the fish turn frantic. And one of them, at least, is armed and dangerous, as deadly as a shark. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs>